Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to discuss dash camera battery packs. I'm going to cover three of the highest capacity dash camera battery packs on the market today. First one being the Black Box My Car PowerCell 8, which has been on the market for just over a year. There are two recent additions to this product offering from Blackview with their Power Magic Ultra Battery B-130X and Thinkware with their iVolt Extra BAB-95. I'll compare their features, answer some of the frequently asked questions I get about dash camera battery packs, and put these dash camera battery packs through a series of tests. So let's get into it. This video contains several video chapters. If there's one of particular interest to you, jump to the time index listed on the screen here, or expand the video description section and click on the link down there. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's take a look at the features of the three dash cam battery packs in this review video. All three of them have the same storage capacity of 7,500 milliamp hours or 96 watt hours. Again, that's a 25% increase over the typical battery capacity of the previous generations of the various dash cam battery packs. They all use the lithium iron phosphate batteries internally rather than lithium ion or lithium ion polymers. So they're much safer for hot environments within your vehicle. The number of charge cycles, which are documented and I confirmed with the various companies for the PowerCell 8, it can at least get 2000 charge cycles, which is just about five and a half years of daily usage. The other two are listed at a storage capacity of remaining of 80% after 1500 charge cycles, and that's just over four years of daily use. Only one of these dash camera battery packs, the Blackview B-130X, supports 12 and 24 volt systems, so it would be suitable for personal vehicles and commercial vehicles, whereas the other two, the PowerCell 8 and the BAB-95, only support 12 volt systems. Now let's take a look at the charging times and power requirements to charge the dash camera battery packs. The numbers in this section are taken directly from the product documentation. I do have a section in this video for actual charging and discharging test results. Make sure you check out that section because the estimated times are a bit underreported here and the amps are a bit underreported as well. So check out that section in the video. Starting off with the PowerCell 8, we have the hardwiring cable on the left. It terminates with an XT60 connector that plugs into the vehicle input port on the dash cam battery pack. On the right side of the image for the PowerCell 8, we have the cigarette lighter adapter cable end, and it has an XT60 I-F connector, which actually has a third connector you can see in the middle there. And you can kind of see a gold color corresponding place in the vehicle input port on the dash cam battery pack. So it knows when the cigarette lighter adapter has been plugged into it. And if you've selected the high charge mode with the slide switch, while the cigarette lighter adapter cable is plugged into it, it knows to restrict the charging amps to the lower five amp charging mode for the dash cam battery pack. Moving on to the Blackview B-130X, the left cable there is the hard wiring cable. It also has the XT60 without that extra third connector. And the cigarette lighter adapter is the same cable as supplied with the PowerCell 8. So it has an XT60 I-F connector with that third connector. Please note that the slide switch for the B130X is a simple on off switch and it detects what charging mode to charge in based on the type of connector plugged into it. So the hard wiring cable with the XT60 connector will allow the B130X to charge in high amp charging mode, while the XT60 I-F connector with the cigarette lighter adapter will restrict it to the five amp charging mode. Moving on to the Thinkware BAB-95, it comes with one cable, a hard wiring cable. There is no cigarette lighter adapter provided. And if you look at the connector port on the dash cam battery pack, you'll notice that in the very center there, there's no um, gold color connector. So it doesn't rely upon the type of cable being plugged in. It relies on the user selecting the appropriate charging mode. Let's move on to the output power cable options. And let's bring up a detailed picture to go through each of them. For the PowerCell 8, we have two power output port connections. We have a USB connection and then a four pin connection in the dash cam output section. And that's where either the cigarette lighter adapter or the three wire hard wiring cable plugs into. When you purchase the PowerCell 8, you make a selection of which type of output power cable you want. You either have the cigarette lighter adapter or a version of the three wire hardware cable. 
the ones that are spliced together with the vendor specific dash cam specific hardware kits or cables are at an extra charge. For the Blackview B-130X, it comes with both the cigarette lighter adapter plug and a three wire hardware cable that's unspliced. You are then responsible for splicing that together with the appropriate hardware cable or hardware kit for your dash camera. Moving on to the Thinkware BAV95, you have the USB power port for a Wi-Fi hotspot or some other device. And then for the dash camera area, we have the output connector, but this one has a six pin connection and three of those connections are for the power related to the dash camera. One of those is an AC in, accessory power in, and then two of those are related to a communications cable, which is specific to dash cameras from Thinkware. And right now there are no cameras available in North America that take advantage of that feature. It does come with an extension cable in the box if that cable is not long enough to reach your dash camera it, once there's a camera available to take advantage of that feature. The green AC in wire is the indicator to the battery pack management system whether it should be charging the battery pack or not. Unlike the other dash cam battery packs where the charging cables were connected to the accessory input or switched power, in the BAB95 case the input charging cable is connected to constant battery power and the presence of power on the AC in wire is the indicator whether to start charging or to turn off charging. Moving on to the output power ratings. The dash cam connection has a voltage range of 11 to 14.2 volts with a supported max load of 2 amps. And the voltage range will vary based on the internal battery pack charge level. And your dash camera's low voltage cutoff feature, if it has one, will potentially turn off the camera before the dash cam battery pack has been fully discharged. So keep that in mind for the total time running in parking mode. And then the USB port has the listed 5 volt 2 amp max and then for the B130X, it's listed a 4.75 to 5.2 voltage range. Again, all those are at two amps max for the USB connection. Are these dash cam battery packs expandable? For the PowerCell 8, yes. You have the option of purchasing a Cellink Neo extended battery. For the B130X from Blackview, no, it is not expandable. They decided to remove the expansion port to reduce the cost since most of their customers do not utilize that feature. And for the Thinkware BAB95, it is expandable in the sense that you can purchase a second BAB95. And there's a wiring example in their quick start guide and warranty booklet. Here's a list of the temperature ranges for the various operating states of the dash cam battery packs. Since they're all produced by eGen, they're very similar, if not identical in most cases. Here are the dimensions of all three dash cam battery packs. They're very similar in size, but there is a slight increase in size. PowerCell 8 is the smallest. Second largest is the B130X, and then the largest of the three is the BAB95. All three dash cam battery packs provide the ability to use an iOS or Android app connecting over a Bluetooth connection to monitor the current charge level. Also in the Cellnic Neo Plus app case for the PowerCell 8, you can use an admin page to define the total storage capacity. And you can also adjust the number of amps used in high amp charging mode. In the Blackview battery app, you can change the setting whether the battery pack beeps when charging power is present or not present. The Blackview and Thinkware apps simply monitor the current charge level and display that information. And for the Blackview app, it's part of the Blackview dash cam app, so you, there's no separate app. You just install the Blackview dash cam app, and that's a sub function within that. And finally, we have the pricing for the dash cam battery packs at the end of January 2023 in the US dollars. The pricing for the PowerCell 8 was recently reduced after the Blackview B130X was released and the authorized reseller pricing was stated at $359.99, so PowerCell 8 was reduced to $349.99, and right now the best price for the Thinkware BAB95 is $399.99 directly from Thinkware. These are for the base dash cam battery pack itself. If you purchase any additional features, such as in the PowerCell 8 case, you select the output cable spliced together with a cable or hardware kit compatible with your dash camera, there will be an additional fee, plus any local taxes and shipping fees are in addition to the price listed here. Let's go through the contents of the box with each of the dash cam battery packs that I'm talking about in this review. The first one is the PowerCell 8 from Blackbox My Car. Blackbox My Car did send me a refurbished unit free of charge. Although I have purchased a unit from them in late 2021 and I have that in my vehicle and use that to power the dash cams that I review on this channel. 
Here's a side view of the PowerCell 8. And we have the extended battery connection port, which is covered by the orange plug. We have the low off high selection switch, the firmware update port in the middle upper portion of the side view, the USB type A connection, where you would power a phone or an external Wi-Fi hotspot. Next, we have the dash cam output connection port. And three of those pins are actually used. The leftmost is the constant battery power. The second to the left is the accessory switch power, so accessory out power. And then the third from the left is the ground for the dash camera. The fourth pin is unused. Next we have the vehicle input connector, and that's where the XT60 connector at the end of the cigarette lighter adapter cable or the hardwiring cable plugs into the dash camera battery pack. Above that we have the status LEDs. The left LED is a red LED that is on when the battery pack is charging. The center LED is a green LED. It'll be on when the battery pack has reached a full charge level. And the LED on the right is a blue LED that will be on when there's an established Bluetooth connection between your iOS or Android device while you're running the Cell Link Neo Plus app. And then located on the bottom of the PowerCell 8, we have the information sticker showing the model type, the power rating, the input charge voltage and max amps, the output voltage range and max amps, storage temperature, and the fact that it's manufactured by Egen Inc. in South Korea. Here are the additional items included in the box with the PowerCell 8. Upper left, we have the Velcro strips to secure the PowerCell 8 to the installation location. Lower left, I have a fuse tap. You should receive four, one of each of the common fuse tap types in various vehicles. Then we have the output cable from the battery pack. I selected the unspliced three-wire cable you make a choice at the time of purchase for the type of cable you would like to receive. You get a cigarette lighter plug, this unspliced cable, or for an additional fee, they will splice the three-wire cable with the hardwiring kit from various dash cam manufacturers such as Viofo, FindView, Thinkware. So check that out, but that is it for an additional fee for the spliced version. Then you get a cigarette lighter input charging cable just to the right of that. And then we have the red and black hardwiring input charging cable. The wires of that cable are 16 wire gauge, and I would like to see those increase to at least 14 and even better 12 wire gauge. So check out the test results section where I show how hot the cables get and why I'm suggesting that change in the wire gauge. And to the right of that, we have the PowerCell 8 user manual. Now let's take a look at the Blackview Power Magic Ultra Battery B-130X. I contacted the marketing department at Pitasoft and they agreed to send me this B130X free of charge for this comparison review. The B130X replaces the previous generation B124X dash cam battery pack. This is the only dash cam battery pack in this review that is 12 volt and 24 volt system compatible. And on the side of the box, we have the list of specifications for the B-130X. It has the same storage capacity as the other two dash cam battery packs in this review at 7,500 milliamp hours or 96 watt hours. The case for the B-130X has been restyled a bit compared to the case for the B-124X. One thing you may notice that's missing from the B-130X is an extended battery connection port. Pitasoft decided to remove that particular feature with this dash camera battery pack to keep the cost factor down a bit since most of their customer base does not utilize that feature. Starting off, we have a simple on off switch. It will decide whether to charge in high amp or low amp charging mode based on the type of connector plugged into it from the charging cable. The cigarette lighter adapter will have that third extra terminal on the connector that plugs into the DC in on the right side. And then the high amp charging mode hardwiring cable will not have that extra connector which will let it know that it can charge in high amp charging mode. Next, we have a USB type A power output port which can be used to power a Wi-Fi hotspot or charge a phone device. Next to that, we have the dash cam connection port, which is used to power the dash camera, either using the cigarette lighter socket that is provided or the three wire hardware cable, which is an unspliced version. And you must splice that together with the wiring for your dash camera. And on the right end, we have the DC in port where the XT60 connector from either the cigarette lighter adapter or the hardwiring cable plugs into to provide the accessory or switch power to charge this dash camera battery pack. And then on the top, we have the status LEDs, which serve the same purpose as the ones I identified on the PowerCell 8. 
This is the information sticker on the bottom of the B-130X with the specification information and the unit serial number. These are the additional items included in the box with the B-130X. Here's a closer look at the input and output power cables for the B-130X. On the left is the hardware charging cable. It's made up of 14 wire gauge wire, and that's an improvement over the PowerCell 8, which only used 16 wire gauge wire. On the bottom, we have the cigarette lighter adapter charging cable. It terminates in an XT60I-F connector, which contains an extra terminal connector in the middle that the XT60 connector on the hardware cable does not, which lets the B-130X know that it should be restricted to low amp charging mode. On the top right, we have the three wire hard wiring cable, which is unspliced, and you're responsible for connecting that to the dash camera wiring. And just below that, we have the cigarette lighter socket plug for your dash camera to plug its cigarette lighter adapter into. And it's a two wire connection into the dash camera battery pack, supplying constant battery power and ground. Then we have two Velcro strips to secure the B-130X to its installation location. And then three fuse taps, which are used to connect the hard wiring charging cable to a fuse box. Please check out the section in this video where I discuss the various hard wiring options for your dash camera battery pack. And finally, we have the Blackview PowerMagic Ultra Battery B-130X User Manual. Now let's take a look at the Thinkware iVolt Extra BAB-95 Dash Cam Battery Pack. I reached out to the Thinkware marketing department to see if they had a unit for this review, and I was told that all of their marketing units had been already sent out. I was offered the opportunity to purchase a BAB-95 at a reduced price, so I chose that option to make sure I had all three dash cam battery packs for this review. Here's a look at the top and bottom views of the Thinkware BAB-95. And here's a closer look at the information sticker that's located on the bottom of the BAB-95. Let's take a look at the side of the BAB-95. In the documentation on the extreme left, it shows an extension battery connector and on my particular BAB-95, there is a glued label over that section. I believe at this point in time, that is not a supported feature. We have the power switch, which has a low, off, and high position. The cable supplied for the charging of this particular dash cam battery pack is a hard wiring cable only. It's a 14 wire gauge cable, and it plugs into the input connector on the right hand side. There is no third connector like on the other dash cam battery packs to detect a cigarette lighter adapter because one is not supplied. You select which charging mode it will operate in based on the position of the power switch. Next, we have a USB type A power output port, which can be used to power a Wi-Fi hotspot or charge a phone device. Next, we move on to an output connector, which is different than the other style connectors in the other two units. We have a six pin connection here, three of which are related to the hardware and cable for the dash camera, two of which are related to the communications cable, which is unique to the Thinkware output cable, and that's for communicating with Thinkware dash cameras as far as the battery status. And then there's the last wire, the green wire, which is the accessory in. So in this particular situation, the BAB95 is actually wired a little differently as far as the input power as well. The hard wiring cable for the charging power is connected to constant battery power. Since the hard wiring cable for the input charging power is connected to constant battery power, what decides whether it is charging or not and whether the dash camera receives the accessory out version of the power is when the accessory in green wire receives accessory or switched power. When there's no power present on the accessory in wire, the dash cam battery pack will not charge. And since the accessory out power has been turned off at that point in time, the dash camera will enter parking mode if the camera has been configured for parking mode operations. Then on the right end, we have the charging cable connector, which we've already discussed. And above that, we have the charging status LEDs, which operate in the same manner as the other two dash cam battery packs. The left one is the red charging indicator. The middle one is the green for fully charged. And then the LED on the right is a blue LED indicating a Bluetooth connection has been established from the Thinkware iVolt app on your iOS or Android device. Here are the additional items in the box with the BAB-95. On the lower left, we have the Velcro strips, which are used to secure the battery pack to an installation location. The upper left, we have the fuse taps, which are provided for the input charging power cable. In the center, we have the input charging cable, which again is connected to a constant battery power source. And the XT60 connector on the end of that plugs into the dash cam battery pack. Please check out the section of this video where I discuss the options available for sourcing the charging power for your dash cam battery pack for this approach and an alternative approach.
Then moving to the right, we have the output cable, which again, as we discussed, is truly an output and an input cable because of the need to supply accessory in switch power supply to it. And then on the very right, we have the Thinkware communications cable extension cable. If the Thinkware communications cable that's part of the output cable is too short to reach your dash camera, you can use this extension cable to reach your dash camera. And the last item in the box is the BAB-95 quick start guide and warranty information booklet. Let's start off with some of the frequently asked questions I get about dash camera battery packs. The first question is, can't I power the dash camera parking mode operations by hardwiring it using fuse taps or the provided cigarette lighter adapter? Yes, you can. Provided your vehicle's battery provides enough power for the amount of time you want to run your dash camera in parking mode. Well, if that's true, then you can get away with powering it with a hardwiring kit using fuse taps. A cigarette lighter adapter itself does not contain a low voltage cutoff feature or a battery protection feature to protect your vehicle's battery from being drained too low. So make sure that your dash camera itself has a low voltage or battery protection feature or make sure whatever you're plugging the cigarette lighter adapter into has that same battery protection or low voltage cutoff feature. The next question is why would I use or need a dash camera battery pack? The first answer would be to power your dash camera's parking mode operations for longer periods of time than your vehicle's battery can support. And then that also helps isolate your dash camera power needs from your vehicle's battery and it prevents draining your vehicle's battery on a repetitive basis, which can shorten the lifespan of your vehicle's battery. And the next question is, if I don't plan on using my dash camera's parking mode feature, do I still benefit by using a dash camera battery pack? That's a good question. And really, no, there's no real benefit in that particular case. Dash camera battery packs are fairly expensive, so they're there to serve a particular need of supporting parking mode operations. And if you're not using parking mode, there's really no need that I can justify the cost of using a dash camera battery pack if you're only going to be using your dash camera to record while you're driving your vehicle. And the next question is, can't I use an inexpensive power bank to power my dash camera? Well, technically you can get it to power the dash camera, but it's not a very good idea from a safety standpoint. The batteries used within those inexpensive power banks are usually lithium ion or lithium ion polymer batteries. And those batteries don't do very well in extreme heat conditions that they may experience within your vehicle. Lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries are potential fire hazards when exposed to extreme temperatures. And that could be a safety hazard for your vehicle and any occupants of your vehicle or anyone nearby your vehicle if they catch on fire. In addition to those safety concerns, charging those power banks can take multiple hours, sometimes four, six, 10 hours, depending on the type of charger they use, compared to the sometimes less than one hour or up to two hours, depending on how you're charging the dash camera battery packs that I'm covering in this review. And this next question is one that I don't get asked that often, but it's something you must consider before purchasing a dash camera battery pack. And that is, how long does it take to fully charge a dash camera battery pack? It depends. How are you providing the charging power to the dash camera battery pack? Are you using the cigarette lighter adapter or the low charging mode? And that will take a much longer time compared to using the hardware cable, which allows it to go into high charging mode. And that decreases the amount of time. But in my test results, using the cigarette lighter adapter and or low charging mode, it can take between 90 and 132 minutes. So make sure you check out the section for my test results in this video for that particular mode. And then if you're using the hardware and cable, it can take between 50 and 70 minutes to get a full charge. So make sure that you understand that your driving habits have to support that kind of driving to fully charge them, assuming the battery pack is fully discharged. So if your average trip is five to 20 minutes or 30 minutes in length, a dash camera battery pack may not be getting fully charged and may not provide the full amount of time you're looking for in parking mode. And the next question is, what company manufactures the dash camera battery packs covered in this review video? And that is eGen Inc. in South Korea. They are a well-known and well-respected dash cam battery pack manufacturer. And since all the dash cam battery packs that are in this review are manufactured by them, they share a lot of common characteristics across them, but they're not all identical. I'm now going to cover some of the information about the current battery packs offered by these three companies and some of their predecessors as well. With respect to the offering from Black Box My Car, the current offering is the PowerCell 8, which was first available in September of 2021. It has a 7500 milliamp hour or 96 watt hour storage capacity. 
They did have a previous battery, the BI750, which is no longer available, which also had the same storage capacity. Now let's move on to the Blackview dash cam battery packs. The current offering is the Blackview Power Magic Ultra Battery V-130X, which first became available in December of 2022. It has a storage capacity of 7,500 milliamp hours or 96 watt hours, which matches the PowerCell 8. But that's a new product offering again in December 2022. Prior to that, the Blackview Power Magic Ultra Battery B 124X was offered. And then prior to that was just the B 124. And those had a storage capacity of 6,000 milliamp hours or 76.8 watt hours. And the increase in capacity is 25%. So that's a nice bump in storage capacity. There's a smaller dash cam battery pack offered under the Blackview name, the Power Magic Battery Pack B-112. It has a storage capacity of 3000 milliamp hours or 38.4 watt hours. It also only supports a cigarette lighter or two wire connection to a dash camera. So if you need a three wire connection, that dash cam battery pack will not be sufficient for your needs. Now let's take a look at the dash cam battery packs offered by Thinkware. The first one is the new offering, which is the iVolt Extra BAB-95 which was first available in December of 2022. It has the same storage capacity as the other two in this review at 7,500 milliamp hours or 96 watt hours. Thinkware still sells the iVolt Mini VAB-50 dash cam battery pack. It has a storage capacity of 4,500 milliamp hours or 57.6 watt hours. The brand new VAB-95 has a storage capacity that's 66.7% larger than the older VAB-50. I ran a series of charge and discharge tests with each of the dash cam battery packs. I wanted to see how long it would take to charge each of the dash cam battery packs using the provided cables. I wanted to see how hot the cables would get while charging the dash cam battery pack and then how many amps the dash cam battery packs actually would consume during the charge mode. And then I created a 12 wire gauge charging cable to see if that would reduce the cable temperature and if that would reduce the number of amps required during the charging mode. During my testing, I used a Viofo A139 Pro three channel dash camera as the power load on the dash cam battery pack. This is to simulate a real world situation where you'll be powering a dash camera while the dash cam battery pack is being charged. For the discharge test, I used the Viofo A139 Pro three channel in low bit rate parking mode. Here's some screenshots from the videos I created for the PowerCell 8 charging mode test. The upper left is the cigarette lighter adapter 5 amp charging mode. It actually went to 5.314 amps at its max amp draw. In the upper right we have the high mode or 9 amp charging mode. Again the PowerCell 8 has a fairly thin charging wire for hard wiring of 16 wire gauge. And you can see that it went to 9.741 amps at its max and the cable temperature there being all coiled up, it actually got quite hot. Then a suggestion from a Dashcam Talk user was to uncoil them, and that did greatly reduce the temperature, but not nearly enough, especially since this is a 16 wire gauge wire. That's what you see in the lower left. And then on the lower right, we have a nine amp charging mode using my own 12 wire gauge charging cable that I made, and it did reduce the temps and did reduce the number of amps as well. Here are the screenshots from the videos that I created for the charging mode test for the Blackview B-130X. And all four of the same charging tests were performed. And you can see that they are exceeding the five amp and nine amp maximums that are stated in the product documentation. Here are screenshots from the charging mode test videos I created for the Thinkware BAB-95. The low amp charging mode for the BAB-95 is at 4.5 amps in the product documentation and the high charging mode is 8.5 amps and that's lower than the other two, which are at 5.0 and 9.0 respectively. You can see that the low amp charging mode with the cigarette lighter adapter did exceed the 4.5 amps stated max, but for the high amp charging mode of 8.5 max, it actually stayed within that limit. Here are the results from my battery pack charge test. I'm showing the maximum temperature of the charge cable reached during the test. I'm showing the number of minutes it took to charge the battery pack from 0% to 100%. And then I'm showing the maximum amps that were consumed during the charge test. And you can see that the battery packs with a 14 wire gauge hard wiring cable varied a little better as far as temperature and as far as the number of amps consumed. And the 12 wire gauge wire that I created actually reduced the temperatures even further 
and slightly reduce the charge amps as well. And you can see that uncoiling the charge cable helped reduce the temperature of the cable and also the amps consumed during the charge toast. I would like to recommend to all three companies that for the hard wiring cable that the wire gauge be changed from either the 16 for the power cell 8 or the 14 for the other two to 12 wire gauge since that does reduce the temperature of the cable and slightly reduces the number of amps required during charging mode. With regard to the cigarette lighter adapter provided with the power cell 8 and the B-130X, there are a couple of changes that would be nice to see with that cable as well. Adding a red LED to the cigarette lighter adapter plug to let the user know that power is present would be nice to have. And also changing the wire gauge from 16 wire gauge to at least 14 wire gauge. As we see in the test results here, changing to a larger wire does seem to reduce the temperature of the wire and slightly reduce the number of amps required. Here are the results from my battery pack discharge tests. This is using the dash cam battery pack at 100% charge level, then powering the, a dash camera, in this case the VOFO A139 Pro 3 channel in low bit rate parking mode using the VOFO HK3-C hardwaring kit. And you can see that the winner as far as overall time was the Blackview B-130X at 11 hours and 45 minutes on test number two. On test number one, it got 11 hours, 42 minutes, very similar times. And then the next runner up is the Thinkware BAB-95 at 11 hours, 28 and 11 hours, 27 minutes. And then the last place here is the Power Cell 8 at 11 hours, 19 minutes, which is a bit shorter than I expected. I usually like to see them within a few minutes of each other. And then the first test I ran was at 11 hours, 34 minutes. One of the potential limiting factors in the runtime in parking mode might be that the low voltage cutoff of the VOFO HK3-C, which is set at 11.8 volts at a minimum, might be turning off the power to the dash camera sooner than necessary. Each of these dash cam battery packs states that they can go down to 11.0 volts. So if there's a way to turn that off, it might actually extend these parking mode times. Although I am impressed with the fact that these are longer times than I expected based on the estimation in my VOFO A139 Pro 3 channel review. I estimated at 10 hours, 41 minutes. So all three exceeded the initial expectation from that review. The next few charts here are showing the charging cycles of the various dash cam battery packs. And I wanted to point out that the PowerCell 8 shows a 99% charge level several minutes before the end of the charge while it's still ramping down the charging current. The Blackview B-130X has a different characteristic. You'll keep raising the charging percentage in the app. You'll hit 76% and then it will jump to 100% and it'll be 100% for the last few minutes as it's ramping down the charging current. The Thinkware BAB-95 has a different characteristic yet again. It will show 100% while it's still ramping down the charging current at the very end. So it's not fully charged at that point and doesn't show the green status LED indicating a full charge until it's fully ramped down the charging current. When I initially released my review on the PowerCell 8 back in 2021, I discussed the various wiring options for the input charging power. This is the documented approach to receive that charging power by using a fuse tap with switched accessory power from a fuse box. My problem with this particular issue is the original circuit that's being powered by that fuse socket in the fuse box may be consuming 15 or 20 amps on its own. And then you're adding another 10 or so amps to the circuit, which may be overloading the circuit. Anytime a fuse tap is supplying five or more amps to a new device in addition to what was already on that circuit, it's usually, in my opinion, not the best idea to use a fuse tap for that particular device. For the Black Box My Car Paracel 8 and the Blackview B-130X, I would recommend this approach. Instead of wiring the switched accessory power to a fuse tap, I would then wire that directly to a four terminal relay. The relay itself has a control circuit which would use the accessory or switched power fuse tap to control the relay. That way the high amp load for the dash cam battery pack charging is moved away from the fuse tap and the fuse box. And then you would use an inline fuse in the wire going from the battery to the relay to make sure the circuit is protected. This is a much safer approach in my opinion than directly taking the power from a fuse tap in the fuse box. Let's take a look at the Thinkware iVolt Extra BAB95 wiring requirements. This is the approach that Thinkware would like you to use. 
where you source the charging power from a constant power fuse tap in the fuse box. And then the accessory in that's part of the output cable, you would use a fuse tap to source that power. Of course, they didn't provide enough fuse taps for that, but uh, that's not my problem with that. Again, it's the high amp charge load that's being placed on a fuse tap within the fuse box. Even though that the BAB95 takes a little bit less amps in high amp charge mode compared to the other two, it's still more than five amps, so my same concerns exist with this particular wiring configuration. My modification to the original configuration is to source the constant battery power directly from the battery with an inline fuse to protect that circuit. That way the high amp charging load is not placed on a circuit within the fuse box, potentially overloading it. Even though the load placed on the circuit by the BAB95 in high amp charging mode is slightly less than the other two dash cam battery packs, it still exceeds the 5 amp threshold that I have for no longer using a fuse tap in a fuse box. The accessory power in on the output cable for the BAB95 is very safe to source from a fuse tap on the fuse box since there's virtually no load on that circuit. It's simply using it as an indication whether to charge the dash cam battery pack. The BAB95 passes along the power received on the AC end wire out the AC out wire to the dash camera and the dash camera uses that as an indication whether to enter or exit parking mode if the camera is configured for parking mode. There's an additional question about charging your dash cam battery pack that I think you need to ask yourself. And that is, do you drive your vehicle in trips that are long enough to charge the dash cam battery pack? You may find that the dash cam battery pack is not getting fully charged and you'll find that the parking mode operations may be prematurely terminated due to a low charge level. And if that's occurring based on your driving habits, a solution to that might be using a DC power inverter to charge the dash cam battery pack in low amp charging mode. Blackbox My Car does sell a DC inverter for that purpose. It has a cigarette lighter socket that you use the cigarette lighter adapter from the dash cam battery pack in low amp charging mode to charge the dash cam battery pack. Now with the Thinkware BAB-95, they do not provide a cigarette lighter adapter, so you would probably have to create one yourself and then switch the switch to low amp charging mode. Blackbox My Car did send me a DC power inverter that they sell on their website free of charge, and I tested it with the Blackbox My Car Power Cell 8 and with the Blackview B-130X. The low amp charging modes for both of those dash cam battery packs actually failed due to the DC inverter hitting an overcurrent or an over temp condition, and it would turn off the power and reset itself. Blackbox My Car is aware of this particular situation. I'm not the only one to run into this case. So they put a warning on their website that the current DC inverter that they sell on the website may not work with their own PowerCell 8 dash cam battery pack. Blackbox My Car is currently searching for a different DC inverter to replace the one that they currently sell. So it will work with all the dash cam battery packs, including their own. Let's talk about the pros, cons, and my final thoughts about the three dash cam battery packs in this review. Starting off with the pros, the three dash cam battery packs in this review, the Black Box My Car Power Cell 8, the Blackview B-130X, and the Thinkware BAB95 have an increased storage capacity compared to their predecessors. All three battery packs have a storage capacity of 7,500 milliamp hours or 96 watt hours. The increased storage capacity gives you a longer parking mode runtime with your dash camera. One of the benefits of using a dash cam battery pack, which is not really specific to these three particular products, but in general, is the fact that you remove the drain on your vehicle's battery to power your dash cam in parking mode. Using a vehicle's battery over a long period of time, that repetitive drain can potentially shorten the lifespan of your vehicle's starting battery. I like the fact that all three dash cam battery packs offer a Bluetooth connection capability so a monitoring app can check on the current charge level of the battery pack. In addition, with the PowerCell 8 and the B-130X, you can configure some of the settings. And now let's take a look at my list of cons or things that need to be improved with these dash cam battery packs. The first thing that most people will comment about dash cam battery packs are they're quite expensive. In fact, they're probably more expensive than the dash cameras they're being used to power in parking mode. It's a large financial investment into your dash camera system but it's either necessary to allow the dash camera to operate long enough in parking mode, or you're trying to protect your vehicle's battery, or both. Some changes I would like to see to the hardware charging cables for each of these dash cam battery packs are, for the PowerCell 8, increase the cable's wire gauge from 16 as it is today to at least 14 to match the other cables from the other products, 
or better yet, for all three of them, increase the wire gauge to 12 wire gauge since in my testing that did reduce the cable temperature and it slightly reduced the number of charging amps required in high amp charging mode. Some changes I would like to see to the cigarette lighter adapter charging cables are for the PowerCell 8 and the B-130X, increase the wire gauge used in the cable from 16 wire gauge to 14 wire gauge in an attempt to reduce the temperatures while in use, much like for the hard wiring cable that I just mentioned. And the second change I would like to see is adding a red LED to indicate that the power is present when you plug the cigarette lighter adapter plug into your vehicle's power port. And my last recommendation is directed at Thinkware. I would like to see them include a cigarette lighter adapter plug in the box since they are priced at the higher end of the three of them in this review, or at least offered as an option to the buyer of the BAB-95. That way, if they need to charge their dash cam battery pack at home, if their driving habits don't support the full charge of the BAB-95, they have the option of using the cigarette lighter adapter charging cable with a DC inverter to accomplish that task. Here are my final thoughts about the three dash cam battery packs in this review. Using a dash cam battery pack in general is a safer option than using a USB power bank to power your dash camera. As I mentioned in the video, USB power banks can be dangerous when exposed to extreme heat conditions, which they may experience during the summer in a parked vehicle. The dash cam battery packs in this review use lithium iron phosphate batteries, and those are far safer for use in extreme heat conditions. The dash cam battery packs in this review have batteries that have a fairly large storage capacity. If your driving habits include a lot of short trips with long parking mode sessions, you may not be fully charging your dash cam battery pack. You may want to consider the purchase of a DC inverter to charge your dash cam battery pack at home using the provided cigarette lighter adapter with the dash cam battery pack. If you decide to purchase a DC inverter, make sure that the output specifications include an output voltage in the range of 14.2 to 14.6 volts with a maximum output of at least 10 amps. The DC inverter currently being sold by Blockbox My Car outputs 14.6 volts and a maximum of 5 amps. The 5 amp max output of that particular DC inverter seems to be a problem with charging these dash cam battery packs. My current recommendation would be to not purchase that unit until Blackbox My Car has found a replacement that has a higher output such as a 10 amp max output unit. If you've decided that you would like to purchase one of the dash cam battery packs in this video, make sure to check out the video description section where I'll have my affiliate links to the products in this video. Since they are affiliate links, my company will make a small commission on each purchase, but at no extra cost to you. If you use the affiliate links for Blackbox My Car or Thinkware, or you simply type in the coupon code of RCG530 at checkout time, you will save 5% off your purchase. So not only do you save some money, but I also get a commission on that purchase. And thank you for using that affiliate link or coupon code. While I was performing the dash cam battery pack charge mode tests, I created videos showing those test results. So if you want to check those out, make sure you look in the video description section for a link to the playlist that includes those videos. And finally, I'd like to thank you for watching this entire video to the end. There's a lot of time and effort that goes into running the test and creating the video, so I truly appreciate it. And if you liked what you saw, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and then hit that bell notification to be notified when I upload videos just like this. Thanks for coming and checking out the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.